Most of us are very familiar with that irritable, annoying feeling we experience when we are hungry. We even have a word for it, being hangry. At some point, we've all experienced negative emotions we couldn't explain disappear after we've had a meal. Parents sometimes identify hangry tantrums in their kids and feed them to make the behavior stop. There are innumerable jokes about hangry people. In fact, I am feeling hangry right now as I shoot this video. But is being hangry just more fodder for jokes? Or is it really a thing where people tend to get more angry and more upset and irritable when they're hungry? The very first study to investigate this phenomenon outside of the lab and attempt to find the links between appetite and emotions says yes, being hangry is very much a thing. The first time the word hangry was used by Rebecca Camo in her story A Splinter of Glass in 1992. Of course, the internet popularized it a decade later and 30 years since the first time it was used. We have more and more data supporting the hangry phenomenon as being real. Previous studies have shown that there indeed is a relationship between hunger and irritability or anger. These have been inside of a lab, but they have shown that people tend to get more and more instinctively aggressive when they're hungry or close to being hungry. In fact, in non-human animals and on land mammals, it has been observed that when animals are deprived of food, there has been an increase in aggression and competition for food with rapidly escalating behavior. There's also a well-known voodoo doll study where researchers asked people to stick pins into voodoo dolls of their partners and spouses when they were feeling angry and they blasted the spouse with louder and longer blasts of noise through headphones when they were. This study showed that the hangry phenomenon was real and partners were poking the voodoo dolls of their spouses more often and played a louder and longer music when they were hangry. In fact, it is even commonly well accepted that judges tend to provide less lenient sentences and judgments statistically just before lunchtime. All of this negative behavior, the irritability and anger is attributed to drop in blood sugar levels, blood glucose levels. Other studies in the past have highlighted the role of a hormone called ghrelin, which is the one that sends signals to our brains to indicate hunger. Interestingly, these studies on ghrelin have shown that the hungrier we are, or rather the lab rats were, the more and more impulsive and erratic their behavior was. The researchers in this study found that when they injected ghrelin, impulsive behavior in these rats increased and they displayed impaired decision making. This is often associated with something called ego depletion, where the negative emotions such as aggression, high arousal behavior and anger tend to occur because individuals cannot exercise self-control or self-regulation. This is triggered by low blood glucose levels and that is the traditional understanding. There are of course conflicting studies on this. For example, people who are on the keto diet and are in ketosis burning fat do not experience these hangry behaviors because they aren't burning glucose for energy even if there is fluctuation in their blood glucose levels. The same thing with those who burn off glucose during intense workouts or running a marathon. Even though there might be a drop in their blood sugar level, they do not react extremely impulsively or in a hangry manner. We are in fact familiar with this kind of impulsive behavior when we're hungry. How many of us in the past have tried to buy snacks or order food when we're actually very hungry and then after eating a little bit realized that we had overordered or bought things that we normally would not have bought otherwise had we been full? That is motor and choice impulsivity and ghrelin increases both. But studies aren't complete with respect to how this occurs. We still do not understand completely how the drop in blood glucose level is tied to hangry behavior and if that in fact is the trigger. This is primarily because not all studies take into account all the contexts in which our blood glucose level drops. This new study is a type of study called ESM which stands for Experience Sampling Method and is also an ecological momentary assessment study. These kind of studies typically use apps that prompt participants through the day to fill in data and allow for data to be gathered in the real world over longer periods of time in natural settings 
as compared to control laboratory settings. So all the participants in this study are actually going about their daily lives and are not sitting in a lab. The study enrolled 121 participants from Central Europe, out of which 64 managed to complete the study. This was a 21-day sampling phase where they reported their hunger, anger, irritability, pleasure and arousal at five points during the day, every day making up a total of over 9,000 responses. These individuals were asked to complete a daily survey for five times. The daily survey was basically a rating survey. They had to rate on a scale of 0 to 100 how hungry, irritable and angry they were. They also had to log in their emotional state and arousal level. During each entry, they were also asked to mark their last meal. For three weeks, these participants received five daily notifications prompting them to complete the questionnaire. Three of these notifications were sent at fixed times, that is before meals of the day, at 8 a.m., at 12 p.m. and at 6 p.m. when the participants were most likely to be hungry. The other two notifications were sent randomly between 9 and 11 a.m. and 1 and 5 p.m. The results from this self-reported study showed that hunger is indeed associated with very strong negative emotions, with anger, irritation and a drastic reduction in pleasure. Out of the people who had completed the survey, the study found that nearly 56% of the reason for changes in irritability was attributed to hunger, while 48% of changes in anger and 44% variation with pleasure were also attributed to hunger. There are caveats of course, 64 is still a small number even though the study was close to the real world. There are again contextual factors missing like physically who the people were with when they were filling out forms and what kind of relationships they had with them which has an impact on the mood. They also did not record whether they were bored or excited from other reasons while they were filling out the survey. Not just that, hunger itself was only self-assessed and reported. The study also does not actually perform measurements on indicators like glucose or amylase enzymes or ghrelin levels. These will come in the future and help us understand the link between heightened negative behaviors and emotions and hunger. However, this study conclusively proves that irrespective of our age, sex, race, location, BMI or any other factor, hunger is in fact one of the largest causes of mood alterations that tend towards negative, especially anger and irritability.